making a Bailey. So it can be made for a boy or a girl. The one we are doing today is, um, is for a boy. Not that a little girl couldn't have a sailboat on theirs too. So we're going to be doing making the, the garment as well as learning how to do this special applique. So you're gonna need some things to get together. You will need your basic sewing supplies and then out of your Bailey pattern, <clears throat> the boy version is view B. So you need the front and back patterns for view B. They are um, pieces four and five. And then you will need the bib, which is piece number one and that's for both views. Um, there's a little tab uh, that will be a loop to hold the, um, the belt, or the, not the belt, but the strap together in the back where it crisscrosses. And then your strap, you'll need that. And then you will also need um, your pattern pieces for your sailboat. And before I forget, get your um, instructions for your applique out. There's a couple of things I really want you to mark just to um, kind of highlight. Uh, the first thing is right under cutting the appliques, your fabrics that you're going to use. If you've got one of our kits, you have um, a piece of white bouquet and a, and a piece of gingham. Lightly starch those because it will help when you are turning your appliques in, in, in a while. Um, it'll help you smooth those edges. And then in step two, when you're cutting out, you need to be sure that you cut with your fabric right side up and the fusible part of the interfacing down. So the fusible part of your lightweight interfacing needs to be down against the right side of your fabric. So the fusible side is the rough side. So if you will just highlight that or circle it, um, I'm gonna let you get things cut out. And I think that's all I need to tell you right now. So get busy. Cutting went well. Uh, put everything aside for your Bailey garment except for the front bib. And on the front bib, uh, just to help position the applique in a little bit, I went ahead and just drew hatch marks. I found the center and then just drew a horizontal line and a vertical line. And um, it'll just help me kind of get it placed in the center. But if you want to eyeball it, then you don't even have to put those lines on there. So we're gonna set that aside for a second. On your appliques themselves, you have the interfacing and the fabric, and you need to pin these with the rough side of the interfacing, the fusible side of the interfacing, to the right side of the fabric. For the gingham, there isn't a right or wrong side, but the fusible side needs to be down against the fabric. Don't be tempted to fuse this on. If you do, you'll be making, starting with a new boat and a new piece of interfacing. We're not going to fuse the interfacing to the applique piece at all. I know that sounds a little weird. And then same way with the sailboat. It will be the right side of the fabric, which is does have a right and wrong side if you're using the white piquet, and then the rough side or the fusible side of the interfacing you're going to stitch all the way around these. Don't leave an opening or anything. And I want you to turn your stitch length down to 1.5. That'll allow you to be a little more precise and it will get that seam a little tighter and stronger for when we're turning these right side out. And again, with the sail, you're gonna stitch all the way around it. Um, I think that's it. You might wanna use a quarter inch foot or an open toe foot just so that you can see right where you're stitching. Let's get started. Now that you've got your boat and your sail stitched, um, I've already turned my sail, but I'll show you what I did. Um, in the back where the interfacing is, on both the sail and on the bottom of the boat, I cut a slit just in the interfacing about an inch and a half wide. Once you do that, then you can carefully turn these. You know what, I forgot to talk to you about trimming though. So let's just back up a second. Um, before you start to turn, you need to trim your seam allowance to an eighth of an inch 
and then on the corners of both the sail and the boat, clip diagonally across the corners. Then cut your slit. And you'll need a point turner for this. get that started on this end. And you're just going to press gently right now. So as you're turning this and using your point turner, if you accidentally poke through your interfacing with your point turner, it's okay because nobody's ever going to see that. And even if you poke a hole, you're still going to have a smooth edge of fabric. And what you can try to do is the point of your turner, if you can get that between the seam allowance and the fabric, instead of between the seam allowance and the interfacing, you'll be able to um, press more firmly and get a sharper point. And then just use the point turner to run along the edges too. I've got my points about as good as they're going to get. So now you need to get out that piece of parchment paper that came with your kit. Because we're going to lay the fusible side down on the parchment paper. And we'll take our iron. You really just need to press the edges, but if you press the whole thing, it's okay because the parchment paper will keep the applique from sticking. So, Go ahead and get that done, and then we will be ready to attach or fuse our sailboat to our bib. Now we're ready to place our applique. I have mine placed, but not fused yet. Um, if you got a kit, you got probably a couple inches of rickrack in your kit. Uh, honestly, you really only need it about an inch. I just think we thought if we included two inches, maybe you'd be less likely to lose it. So, so I've cut mine to about an inch in length and I'm just looping it, folding it so that both of those ends can go right there underneath the sail. And now remember your interfacing is um, fusible side down now. So as we press, that will secure it to your fabric, to your bib. And try not to um, uh, give a backward forward motion with your um, iron, but just press and then lift and then press. And then once you get the bottom of your boat where you want, do the same thing. Okay, now let's talk about um, stitching it on. There are several different options. You could use um, an edge stitch foot and move your needle position over and just use a straight stitch and just come in maybe, um, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and then just stitch along the edges with a straight stitch. That would be the easiest thing to do. Um, there are other stitches. Um, 
This is a blanket stitch. This is a huge blanket stitch, so obviously you wouldn't want that. Um, <clears throat> sometimes it's called a pin stitch. Uh, if you have something like this on your machine, it looks like this, then what you can do is just set your settings for a, um, I believe it's a two for the width and a 1.5 for the uh, length. Also, you could just do a two and two if that's easier to remember. And this would be your applique. This would be your garment fabric. You could do that. You could do uh, just a simple tiny zigzag. I wouldn't do a satin stitch because that would be pretty heavy on this edge and it really isn't needed because your edge is already finished. But I'm just gonna leave that up to you and um, play around with a piece of fabric and some of your stitches. These stitches, there's one that looks just like this on my machine, but it has a backward forward motion to it. And um, so it actually is meant to leave a hole. Uh, like you would with pin stitching. And you don't want that, that would be too heavy. But if you have something that looks more like a blanket stitch that doesn't go back and forth in the same hole several times, then that would be your preference. With my machine, these type of stitches are in what's called the quilting stitches. And so you might wanna look there if you're not really familiar with all the different stitches your machine has. I'm going to go ahead and do the blanket stitch like this, and I'll just be using white thread on both the sail and the bottom of the boat, and then we'll talk about what goes right down here when I get done with that. So play with your stitches, decide what you like the best, and then use an open toe foot. I think that works best for seeing the edges, and we are almost finished with our applique. We are almost finished with our applique. The last thing to do is the satin stitch. And to do that satin stitch and make it look really pretty, lower your top tension on your machine to three. That will cause your tension with the bobbin to be not balanced and the bobbin thread will be tighter. And so when you stitch, the bobbin thread will be pulling the top thread underneath. So you can see I still just have my white bobbin in and you can see there's blue thread on each edge. It just makes a prettier bead there. So I used a stitch width of three and a stitch length of just under 0.5. So you'll have to play with that. Don't, don't, um, don't use it for your applique until you've played with it and make sure it's something you like. Also, um, use a foot that has a, what I call a ditch in it. It's my open toe foot, but it's actually, this is uh, for applique. And you can see, or I hope you can see that there's an actual ditch there as opposed to it just being flat like um, an all purpose foot would be like this. So, Hopefully you have something like that. That allows the, the thickness of those threads of that stitch to slide through instead of getting bogged down. Um, oh, I when I did mine, I also just tore off a piece of that parchment paper we were using and placed it underneath there to do my satin stitch and then it just pulled away. And then after that, we are going to pipe the, um, bib and so I made my piping. Um, you can use purchase piping or you can make your piping if you're not familiar with how to make it or if you need a little refresher. We have tutorials on how to cut bias and how to make the corded piping with the baby cord. But let me just go ahead and talk a little bit in case you are not um, real experienced in stitching piping on a garment. Uh, when I do a basic construction class, I will often suggest that they use a glue based it. It's just a water soluble glue. I like it because it's just a small bottle. It has a little tip on the end. If it gets clogged, you can just stick a straight pin down in there, but it usually doesn't even get clogged. And then you just start by just putting tiny little dots right along the very edge of your fabric and then you can just place 
your piping down on those dots, matching the raw edge of your piping with the raw edge of the bib fabric. And then let me just go ahead and I'll just do this until we can get to this curve up here. So what you'll do if you want to use this technique is when you get up to this curve, stop and make some clips in your piping so that you can round this curve. up here so you can see it. Put a couple more clips there. So you can see how clipping it helps it go around that curve. So if you're not comfortable with just laying your piping on your fabric and stitching, um, you can do this. You may have another um, method you like to do. Some people will pin it. But whatever, um, whatever you're comfortable with, but get your piping done. And um, so you're gonna pipe here and across the bottom. You can pipe everywhere except the side seams. Now that you've got the stay stitching done, um, before we go on to step five, Go ahead and pull some of that cord out of each end of your piping, about a half an inch. Clip that off so that that seam won't be so bulky. So after you do that, then we are ready for center front and center back seams. So that will be this seam and this seam. This is the front, the longer piece is the back. And then you'll do the same with the lining. And then in addition to that, if you will just trim off, after you've done the, the center seam, if you will along the bottom edge of the leg, this bottom edge right here, if you will just trim off an eighth of an inch along there on both uh, back and front of the lining. Now we are ready to continue with construction. Um, I realized I kind of jumped ahead when I had you go ahead and do your piping, but now we've got that out of the way. So we're gonna go back now to marking um, our fabric and um, start by marking the buttonholes. And if you will just line up the stitching line of your bib pattern with your piping, and then if you have a blue marker like this that kind of will soak through this tissue, all you have to do is just put a dot at the top of the buttonhole and that will transfer onto your fabric. And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go ahead and do another mark down here because I'm not sure what size buttons I will put on yet. And then for your the back of the romper, there are uh, strap placement lines, so you'll need to mark those. Um, on your um, on your strap, there is a loose a loop placement line, so you need to mark that. And then the first thing we're going to do is what's called a stay stitch, and um, you're going to be stitching just the inseam line regular stitch length, but just a scant quarter inch. So just within the seam allowance, you're gonna do that with both back pieces, both front pieces and both back and front linings. So there will be eight little stitching lines that you're gonna do before we get started with anything else. So let's do that. And then we will be ready to skip down to step five.
So now that you've got your center front and center back seams done, you will need to clip at the curve and press those seams open. And then don't forget to trim that eighth inch off of the bottom of the lining. It'll just be a little piece like this that you trim off. And the reason for that is so that when we get this constructed, there won't be any lining showing at the bottom edge of the, of the little pant legs. Um, so the next thing we are going to do is we're going to put the bib and the front of the romper right sides together and stitch. You'll put your piping foot back on for this step and you'll stitch right on that same stitching line that you can see from your piping. And then you'll do the same thing for the um, lining. You'll take the bottom of the front lining and you'll stitch the bottom of the bib to the lining right sides together. So right now it's kind of like we're making two rompers. I'll see you back in a bit. Now that you have your bib stitched to um, the bottom of the romper, and the same with the lining. I am noticing in step six, it says to press this seam down. I think that might be wrong because it automatically wants to, to flip this way. And so you might wanna just circle that and maybe put up instead of down. I think it just, I mean, you could do that. that I don't know, I think that might be a misprint. Anyway, the next thing um, I want you to do are your straps and I've gone ahead and stitched mine. I've turned one and I've stitched another one and just trimmed it, clipped the corners. And now I am going to use, I hate using something that I'm not sure we currently have in stock, but if we don't, um, keep checking, but this is called a stuff it. And so at one end, it's um, it's a rounded tip and then the other is just a more blunt end. So I start by just using my thumbs to press some of the fabric at this sewn end down in there. And then once I do that, let me get this out of the way, then I can just start working the stuff it down through the strap. Once I have it turned right side out, then I use the more pointed, but, but still a curved point, and I work along all the seams so that they can be pressed flat. And then I also go all the way down to the end and you can gently push to get the corners as pointed as possible. And then when I press this, I will press it with the seam up like that and just try to work my iron just on the seam, not, not creasing these edges and then flip it over and do that seam and then press it flat like it will lay. So after you have done that, the next step is um, stitching your uh, straps on to the back of your romper. So I've got my blue marks, my placement marks and I'm ready to put my straps on. Now be careful when you put your straps on, you're going to you you're going to have the open end that's at an angle and you want to lay it so that the strap comes this way. In other words, we'll crisscross when I get this strap pressed, it'll crisscross like that. So, what you don't want is this. 
Once you have those placed, go ahead and just baste across there to hold them in place for now. And then we will be back for the next step. Now that you have um, your straps on, we're ready for step 12. And that is the side seams. So with right sides together, place the back onto the front and stitch each side seam. And then press each side seam open. At the bottom, at the, the crotch area, I want you to press a quarter of an inch toward the wrong side of your garment. So actually where that uh, stay stitch line is, you're going to press so that you can just barely see that stay stitch line on the wrong side. Now we're going to unfold it for right now, but for a step later on, you will be glad that you already pressed that. It'll be much easier to do that step. Uh, repeat the same thing with the lining. After you've done that and pressed those seams, then we're going to put the romper right sides together. So now we are at step 13. So I've got my lining turned right side out, my romper fabric inside out. And you want to keep the straps out of the way. So just make sure that they are hanging down out of the way so they don't get caught in this next seam. So as you can see in the picture, you're going to match side seams from the lining to the side seams of the outer fabric. The center back seams you will match. And you will actually be sewing basically in a circle. So you can you can start anywhere. Um, what I might suggest is you start at a side seam and go around the front, around the bib, and down to the next side seam using your piping foot. So you'll be stitching with this side up so that you can see that stitching line. And then after you've done that, you could go back to your all-purpose foot, make sure you put your, if you've changed your needle position, make sure you put that back to the center position and then finish stitching the rest of the back until you get to that side seam where you started. I hope that makes sense. I'll show you what I did. But uh, the main thing is to match all of these seams. and stitch with this side up so that you can see your stitching line from your piping. After you do that, uh, turn it right side out and press. Okay, so at least up until this point, I hope you feel like this has been a pretty simple um, project. Now comes the confusing part. At least it's confusing if you don't have someone to show you how to do it. So this is where we are going to sew the bottom of the legs together. And the way we do that is by going to one side of your garment, taking a hold of the side seam of your garment fabric, a side seam of your lining fabric, and then with the rest of your fingers, just wad it all up. I'm sure you've just ironed it, and now we get to wad it all up and put those two side seams, don't let go of these, put them together and put a pin in there. Once you've done that, then you can we call this a taco. Then you can start pinning and you will um, start stitching here at the crotch, just right there, not across here. So 
So just keep the raw edges together. Until you get to the other crotch seam. Okay, so let's stitch this quarter inch seam allowance. And I'll see you back for the other leg. I realized after we finished the uh, previous segment that I told you to stitch and flip and press, but I did not tell you to trim and clip your seams first, and that is important. So if you didn't do that, go ahead now, turn it wrong side out again, and trim and clip those seams, especially clip at the corner, or, you know, at the curved edges at the top. And um, do that, and then you'll be ready to stitch your casing. Now your casing will start, your first line of stitching will start a half, an, excuse me, an eighth of an inch above the top of the back of your pants. And then the second row of stitching for your casing will start just a little bit above where the piping is. Now this garment is um, designed for half inch elastic. And I know that's not necessarily as common as most of the elastics that we use. Uh, we do have it at the children's corner, but if by chance you can't get half inch elastic, then you can use three quarters. And instead of starting that second row of stitching um, up above the piping, you will stitch it right below the piping. And that will give you then enough room for uh, your three quarter inch elastic. So just another option in case you can't get your hands on the half inch elastic. So once you've gotten your casing, um, stitched, you'll be ready to put your elastic in. And we have um, a chart on the instructions that gives the suggested length for these um, different sizes. But if you have a chance to get your little guy's measurements, then that always is the best thing to do, whether it's a romper like this or whether it's the Parker pants or Robert pants. So if you can get that, um, you will... Um, probably have a little better fit than just guessing. And um, we usually give generous amounts when we give a chart like that because we never know. And the last thing we want is for you to finish and it be too tight. So cut your elastic, put a safety pin at one end, separate the lining from the outer fabric, go up to where the side seam is right here, and then that's where your elastic will go in. That's where you, you will start your safety pin. When you feel the end of your elastic about a half an inch from where the casing starts, go ahead, stop, stitch that in place, and then keep pushing your pin through till you get about a half an inch on the other side, and then stitch that end in place. And then be sure to take your safety pin out. I have often left safety pins in casings and not realized it till I was completely done. So get that done and then we will go on to step 16. Now we've got the one bottom of one leg sewn. Um, the instructions didn't say to trim, uh, but I went ahead and trimmed my seam allowance. So now we are going to turn everything right side out again. If you want, you could go ahead and press this leg, or you could wait and do it when you have both of them done. And you'll press so that you see a little bit of your outer fabric. Remember, we trimmed an eighth of an inch off of the lining, so that should be easy for you to roll this so that you get a little bit of your outer fabric showing on the inside. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing again. 
at the uh, other open leg, you're gonna take a hold of one side seam and the side seam of the lining. And with your other fingers, you're just gonna shove it all up in there. And once you get to the point where you could put those two seams together, go ahead and do that and get a pin in there. So we're doing the same thing. We're just sewing this lower edge of the romper. Okay, so get this edge sewn and then we'll come back and turn it right side out. Okay, now we've got the second leg sewn. It's pretty crazy, doesn't it? But if you look at this and look at the picture, that's real, that really is what it looks like. So now we have to reach in through one of the crotch openings and pull everything through. So if you're making a three months, it's a little tricky. But it works. ready to press this leg and then we are almost at the finish line. Now we are ready to finish these crotch edges. Remember how earlier in the pattern we pressed under this edge a quarter of an inch. We stitched it and pressed it under a quarter of an inch. Now we are refolding that and you may need to press a little bit. So you are going to stitch right along this edge, an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then you're gonna move up and stitch three quarters of an inch from this edge. And what that does is that stabilizes that area right there. So whether you're doing grippers or whether you're doing buttons, you still need to stitch on those two lines. Uh, I've already done the back. And so this is what it looks like. And then you're ready for either grippers or buttons. The next thing we're going to do is the little loop for holding the straps in place where they crisscross in the back. If you will just press each end in a quarter. that. And then like that. Now we can put this Oh wait, I have to stitch the edges first. Okay, I'll stitch the edges and then we will come back and finish up. Thank you. 
Now I've stitched my loop. I stitched the long uh, sides that you do before you stitch it to the strap. And then you just place it on your placement lines and stitch across each end. And then you slip your strap through there. And that keeps the straps from falling off their shoulders. So, the only thing I have left are buttons. I need to go to the shop to get some buttons and either grippers or buttons uh, for, for the crotch. Either one works. We have plenty of both. I hope you've enjoyed this. I think this is super cute. I can't wait to see my grandson in it. And you know, those little boys stay a little so for such a short time. Um, I feel like I need to make a half a dozen of them or something for this summer. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.